In this video, you're gonna learn how to destroy someone in an argument. Mike, do it. This is the third video in our argument series. The first video covered how to win versus persuade. The second introduced you to influencing someone with the help of Aristotle. In this one, you're gonna learn how to absolutely destroy your opponent's argument. <laughs> This is a last resort. I repeat, a last resort. And something that should only be employed if you must destroy. Empathy and persuasion are our first goal. And if that cannot be achieved and amicable means become impossible, then by all means, destroy. Right a lot. Here are some Canadian words that sound funny to us Americans. Chesterfield. Garburator. Took. A loony, eh? The double-double, Tim Hortons fans. Look out for that incoming Chinook, eh? Oot ne boot ne boot. Just kidding. I never once heard anyone say that except Americans making fun of Canadians. In Canada, the last letter of the alphabet is not Z, it's Z. Go figure, eh? I got my bachelor's degree up in Canada. I used to cross the border every day to obtain my degree. And every time I came across the border, I would be asked a series of questions. Uh, where was I going? Where was I from? Is this my vehicle? Sometimes they ask strange questions. Do I have any fruit? Am I delivering a package that I don't know about? <laughs> How does that even work? Well, many times I went through the border and I got to know most of the guys that were there. One morning I showed up a little bit late on my way to class. I'm late for school. And this Border Patrol agent was training another new agent. As I pulled up, I was watching them, and I read his lips. He said, watch this. And I was like, watch this. I rolled down my window. First question that he asked me was, who's the Prime Minister of Canada? Now, I didn't know. <laughs> I'd been going to school for, oh, probably two years at that point, and uh, it had just changed, and I didn't know who the new person was. I, I kind of realized that he wanted to make fun of me personally, or maybe just Americans broadly, that we don't know anything about Canadian politics. But uh, push come to shove, my knee-jerk reaction was to ask him who the governor of Washington State was. <laughs> now, that was a quick response. I didn't put too much thought into my challenge. Uh, I didn't consider what winning might look like or what was at stake, what the consequences were of me making him look foolish, but I kind of wanted to make him eat his words because he was he was using me as an example uh, to prove something about Americans or me particularly. He paused, looked up at me and said, I don't have to know that. I said, fortunately for both of us, I don't have to know who the prime minister of Canada is to get into your country. The lady he was trading laughed and he looked down and then over at her like he was angry uh, I got a little yellow slip and uh, was asked to pull in so that my vehicle could be strip searched they ripped out every seat in my vehicle so I didn't even know my seats came out <laughs> it was a, a Subaru at the time and uh, I had to put everything back like that was frustrating now that day was a day that I had a test and I'd been studying all night for I showed up about an hour and a half late. Missed the class entirely. I had to do a retake, which was different content. So it required me to study even more than what I had already put into it, which was very frustrating. That really, that sucked. <laughs> like I won, I made him look foolish. He didn't know who the governor of Washington was, but uh, you know, <laughs> it was not good. So three years later, it's time for graduation. I've got my wife's parents in the car, they're coming up to celebrate with me. As we get in line and get closer to the agent, I said, oh no, guys, we're gonna get pulled in. The same gentleman who uh, questioned me about not knowing the prime minister, sure enough, he was there. I hadn't seen him since that day we got pulled in. We made it to my graduation ceremony, just barely. But uh, they were like, how, how do you know, how'd you know we were gonna get pulled in? And so I explained the story and, you know, sometimes your quick wit can uh, end up harming you. <laughs> uh, another story for you. 
one time a buddy of mine and I went to a movie. We couldn't find a parking spot and driving down each aisle and finally we see the white lights of a car backing up. And so I, I stop and I put my blinker on to indicate, you know, we got this and uh, they leave and no one's around, I park, get out of the car and this little white Honda Civic screeches to a halt. I mean, they slammed their brakes on so it made it a noise and I thought there was gonna be an accident or something. I turn around and there's this guy he looked like he was a gang member, uh, rolled down his window and he starts cussing at me. And I'm like, I didn't understand what he was mad about. I knew it was at me for something. So I, I took a couple steps closer towards the vehicle. Well, he started looking in the glove box, presumably for a weapon. Uh, I don't know. He was just so angry with me. So I stopped where I was kind of like, am I about to get shot? Like, <laughs> I don't know what I did. He opens his, his car door and he puts his foot on the ground like he's gonna step out with his hand still concealed in the glove compartment. I said a couple of prayers and uh, I thought, am I gonna, am I gonna get shot? Am I gonna get into a fight? Like, and turns out in his rage, I, I pieced together some of the phrases. He was upset with me because he thought I stole his parking spot. Now, in a situation like that, you only have a few moments to react. Here's what I did. I looked down at the ground and I said, hey, man, I'm sorry. I, I had no idea that you were looking for a place like I was. I didn't see any other vehicles around here. It happened at the right time for when we pulled up. Would you please forgive me? And with that, he sat back in the car. He said, no, man, like his demeanor completely changed. No, man, it's cool. You got this. Close the door and they left. And they sped off just as fast as they stopped. But uh, that was a fascinating engagement. I wasn't thinking like, I'm gonna ask this guy to forgive me because I'm, I feel like I'm really in the wrong. I mean, I, I could have been, I wasn't aware of it, but it wasn't enough for me to uh, wanna throw down with this guy. I didn't wanna get in a fight or get shot or stabbed or whatever he had planned for me. I turn around and my buddy who was in the passenger side was ducking behind three cars away from us. I said, Jeremy, where you at, man? <laughs> He thought I was going to die and he wasn't going to join me. I'm like, thanks for having my back. We went and watched the movie. <laughs> Never talked about it again. But that's insane. That's insane. One time my quick wit got me in trouble and another time it got me out of it. Take note of which one displayed humility and which one arrogance. My close friend, Tony Stark, offers another example of using quick wit for good and evil. Yeah, big man in a suit of armor. Take that off, what are you? Genius, billionaire, playboy, philanthropist. Sometimes we can't help it. <laughs> to begin with, no one is that good in reality without spending time evaluating the argument before ever being thrust into the fray of battle. Your, your brain has the shell on it. Are you talking? Shut up. I'll show you how to respond with quick wit in just a second but we need to cover destruction by argument in order. Stick with me and I'll show you how destruction is achieved in the preparation before any threat is actually experienced. Here's how to destroy by argument in order of importance. Number one, evaluate when to win. What's at stake? Define what winning looks like. Consider the cost of losing and the cost of winning. The goal of arguing is to convince others to accept our ideas of their own free will. If your goal is to control the battlefield, you'll alienate your audience and force them into submission or flight. You don't want people who can't think for themselves or people who flee from you. Your goal in winning is to create friends who have been persuaded to agree with you, so much so that they share your ideas as if they were their own. Keep this in mind when engaging with a supposed enemy. Fight strong, sound, and carefully, but most importantly, fairly. Fight fairly. Don't make mistakes in logic. Evidence, relevance, persuasion. Be polite and offer grace. If you really want to destroy them, you will only do so because they made a misstep and refuse to back down or concede. Give them enough lines to hang themselves and point out the inconsistency, the logical fallacies, hypocrisy, but don't play the crowd at their expense. I say we kill the beast! Play the crowd at the expense of their argument. That's how you win. 
Be so charitable, honest, fair, and caring about the person as well as the issues they're arguing for that you destroy your enemy by making them your friend. My quick wit got me in trouble with the Canadian Border Patrol agent. I didn't consider if it was indeed the time to win. I didn't think about what was at stake. Never put thought to what winning would look like beyond making this pompous Canadian eat his own words and his trainee laugh at him. I put no thought to the future ramifications of winning this meaningless battle of wits. I was late for my test, almost missed my graduation. Would I take any of it back? Never. <laughs> Number two, relationship quotient. With every conflict, there's a relational aspect. Some conflicts should not be won at any costs and destruction should never be pursued. Consider the wife that you promised to protect. What does it say of you if your goal has shifted to destroy, regardless of her disposition towards you? If she treats you poorly, love her sacrificially. Which behavior towards her do you think will result in winning her over again? It's the craziest thing. I destroyed every argument she ever put forward, but I didn't win her back. She divorced me and now I don't feel like I won at all. There are risks in seeking to destroy arguments with people that you love and live with. But sometimes if the truth is being abused, mistreated or ignored, we must go there. I just want you to be aware of the results and consequences of winning or losing, however you define it. Number three, to be quick-witted, prepare beforehand. Remember when I said no one is that quick in reality? They've thought through the arguments before they were in a position to feel threat. There's an exhaustible number of objections that can be made on any given subject. To become a force to be reckoned with, all you have to do is research every argument and how to overcome them. It's not that difficult. Yes, it does take time and research, but the payoff gives you confidence. And instead of shrinking away in fear from the conflict that you might have, you grow excited at the opportunity to show your work. Become a fan of the opponent, of their heroes. Learn what they're learning. That way, you'll be prepared for combat. Understanding the subject inside and out will prepare you for a quick comeback because you've already thought through the challenges. Number four. If you want to destroy, you'll need to commit to memory a couple of things. Know the difference between an argument, an opinion, a speculation, a refutation, a rebuttal, and the burden of proof. Let's unpack these words. An argument is a line of reasoning that provides logical connections that lead to a true and persuasive conclusion. Think two premises leading to a singular conclusion that is built upon one another until the destination is unavoidable. Make sure your arguments are watertight and train your mind to see where theirs is not. Know when someone's using opinion instead of an argument. If someone's sharing their opinion, it holds no sway on your agreement or disagreement, depending upon your relationship quotient with them. Often, if you have an affinity to this person or one day you hope to, their opinions will become yours. I mean, it's crazy. We finish each other's sandwiches. That's what I was going to say. If someone offers an opinion on something, you can simply reply, okay. If they're trying to convince you, they'll need to formulate an argument. Don't respond to an opinion as if it were an argument. Everyone will lose in that scenario. Speculation is an opinion in address. It can include rumors, gossip, deep thoughts with Jack Handy, and any form of fanciful ruminations. Entertain them, just don't give them credence or warrant as arguments. Move along, move along, nothing to destroy here. Nothing to see here, please! A refutation is when an argument has been challenged with a real problem. If the argument can't overcome the refutation with objection handlers, explanations, or counter arguments, then the argument dies a violent explosion. Which leads us to our next cherry bomb, the rebuttal. A rebuttal is an attempt to prove an argument wrong, but just an attempt. If it can be shown that the challenge is just a rebuttal, but fails at refuting, no response is required beyond you've not demonstrated how your rebuttal is related to my argument. Lastly, understand the burden of proof. Whoever makes the claim has the burden of proof to provide evidence that supports it. Don't let others place a burden of proof upon you that they conjured up. You might see this tactic when someone asks you a question that forces you to make a claim 
don't fall for this trap, but be sure to hold people's feet over the flames if they make claims without offering proof. Make them demonstrate that it is the way they say it is. Number five, ask your opponent to define their terms, especially when they're unclear. I'm leaving you people. What do you mean, you people? What do you mean, you people? Huh? I Number six, destroy the argument with logic, pointing out logical fallacies, syllogism missteps, relevance, and evidence. Check out the host of videos Critical Thinker has made on these subjects to prepare. Pinpoint the main issue being argued and see if you can poke holes in it. Open your eyes. Is the argument relevant? Is the evidence provided relevant? Is the argument assuming something yet to be proven or illegitimate? Number seven, remain calm. Calmness in the midst of an attack proves confidence and a level headedness. One strategy to help you remain calm is silence. Be comfortable in silence. When you're gathering your thoughts and evaluating what's been said, it's better to wait to say the perfect thing than to shoot your mouth off emotionally. Sometimes this tactic can make people feel uncomfortable and they'll fill that empty space with questions, offer more information, or attempt to further their argument. Use this to your advantage in both ways. There's nothing wrong with silence, and we often give ourselves less time to respond than we do our opponents. Give yourself time to think and let the silence rest. Number eight, rhetoric. I touched on rhetoric in our last video and I often don't consider it in my formulations of arguments, but it needs to be a part of your repertoire if you want to really publicly shame someone. I wasn't the best because I killed quickly. I was the best because the crowd loved me. Win the crowd and you'll win your freedom. Remember, this video is about destruction and getting the audience, the crowd, your family on your side is of utmost importance in owning your opponent. You could also call this playing the crowd. To up your rhetorical powers, I encourage you to incorporate figures of speech, analogies, idioms, metaphors, cliches. Even Yoda speak, just mixing up the way you say things, rhymes, alliterations, they help people remember what you're saying. A compare and contrast chart, even growing your argument from smallest to greatest points can be memorable. If you want me to make a video about this subject, mention it in the comments because it can be particularly powerful, even if your argument isn't. Point out hypocrisy in your opponent. To do this well, you'll need to understand the theories of truth and the shortcomings of relativism, but rest assured, we made a video for that called, You Can't Handle the Truth. Now, there are some tactics and strategies that you can use when you don't know the arguments and feel thrust upon a scenario that demands your response. I'll make a future video about those helpful techniques that can sometimes be employed to destroy, though they were designed to help you tread water when you don't know where the shark is. When and if you choose to destroy, make sure it's a last resort and your opponent isn't Canadian. If you enjoyed this video, you'll probably enjoy one of these videos. So click on the screen to up your critical thinking game. And until next time, critical thinkers, think deeply.